In this video, I will be discussing about Ford Fulkerson algorithm. It is used to solve maximum flow problem. So the goal here is to find out how much stuff we can push from the source to the sink. So let's say we are given this flow network. So we can thought of this as a graph. S is our source vertex and T can be thought of as a sink vertex or a target vertex. And we want to see how much stuff we can push from S to T. So if we take a real life example, let's say this represents water network and all these edges are water pipes and the edge weight that is provided is the maximum capacity of that pipe. So the pipe from S to A has the maximum capacity of seven pipe from A to B has the maximum capacity of five. So now our goal is how much water can we effectively push from source to the sink. So this maximum flow problem has a set of rules. So the two rules are that the flow is less than or equal to capacity. So each of these edges has a maximum capacity that is the weight of the edge. So when we say flow is less than capacity, we mean that we cannot send more water through this pipe than the maximum capacity. So when we're talking about this edge from D to C, either we can send one or two because the maximum capacity is two. So for each of the edge flow should be less than or equal to the maximum capacity. And the second rule that we have here is incoming is equal to outgoing except source and sink. So the incoming water to a particular vertex should be equal to the outgoing water that is flowing from that vertex. So that means conservation principle is applicable. Incoming should be equal to the outgoing. So keeping in consideration these two conditions, our goal is to find the maximum amount of stuff that we can move from source to the target. So this is known as maximum flow problem. So the algorithm that is used to solve this maximum flow problem is known as Ford Fulkerson algorithm. It is also sometimes referred to as Edmund Scarp algorithm because some optimization was done by Edmund Scarp. So now let's have a look at how this algorithm works. Before we see the algorithm, there are a few terminologies that we need to understand. First is the residual capacity. So residual capacity is the capacity of the edge after subtracting the flow from the maximum capacity. Next term that we have is residual graph. So basically it is the graph with the same vertices and edges, but instead of the capacity, we use the residual capacities. So instead of edge weights, we use residual capacities. So the graph that we obtain in this manner is known as residual graph. And the third term that we have is augmenting path. So augmenting means increasing. So augmenting path is a simple path in the residual graph in which the residual capacity is positive. So we'll see in the pseudo code of the algorithm. As long as we can find the augmenting path, we'll continue the algorithm. Now let's have a look at the pseudo code. So the first step of the pseudo code is we keep a variable maximum flow. So this will be our result. So next we have is for each edge that is present in this graph, we initialize the flow to the weight of the edge. Then the next step is while there is a path P from S to T in residual graph. So S can be thought of as our source and T is our sink. And this RG is residual graph. So let's first draw the residual graph. So this is our residual graph. It is the same graph as the original graph and we initialize the flow of all of the vertices equal to the weight. Then we say while there is a path P from S to T in residual graph, we have a path from S to A, A to B and B to T. Then the next step is we calculate the minimum residual capacity in this path. So the residual capacities that we have are S to A we have 4, from A to B we have 4 and from B to T we have 2. So the minimum cap that we have here is 2. Then the next step is we add the minimum cap to the maximum flow. So we add 2 here. Next step is so for each edge in this path P we set flow of U to V and flow from V to U. So let's take the first edge which is from S to A. Flow of S to A will be the initial flow minus the minimum cap that we have obtained. So it will be 2. So I will change this for 2, 2. And then flow from A to S will be the initial flow. So it is 0 and the minimum cap which is 2. So flow from A to S will be 2. 
So you can see in the residual graph, we'll have that edges also, which is not present in the original graph. So these edges are known as backward edges and the edges that are present in the original graph, those are known as forward edges. So the concept of backward edges is because at a later stage, we might come to a point that maybe we want to reduce the flow that we want to send from S to A. So to keep that in mind, for each of the edges, we'll add a reverse edge also. So that is why we have flow from U to V and flow from V to U as well. So now let's pick the next edge, which is from A to B. So flow of A to B is the initial flow, which is four minus the minimum cap, which is two. And the flow from B to A will be the initial flow and the minimum cap. So here also flow from A to B is two and from B to A, it is also two. Now let's see for B to T. Now flow of B to T is the initial flow, which is two and the minimum cap, which is also two. So flow from B to T is zero and the flow from T to B is the initial flow, which is zero and the minimum cap, which is two. So when we have an edge with a flow of zero, we can remove that edge. So we'll remove this edge from B to T. And now we have an edge from T to B with a weight of two. So let's add this edge here. So this completes our first cycle of this while loop. Next, we again come here while there is a path P from S to T in this residual graph. So now if we see here, there is a path from S to C, from C to D and from D to T. And the minimum cap that we have is three because S to C is three, C to D is six and D to T is also six. So the minimum of three, six, six is three. So the minimum cap is three and we come here. So we add minimum cap in the maximum flow. So we add three here. Now let's remove this. So I've just drawn this graph again. And now let's process all the edges in this path. So the first edge that we have is from S to C. So we calculate flow of S to C, which is the initial flow, which is three and the minimum cap that we have, which is also three. So flow from S to C is zero and the flow from C to S is the initial flow, which is zero and the minimum cap, which is three. Now let's draw this in this graph. So when we have flow of zero, we can remove that edge. So we'll remove the edge from S to C. And for C to S, we have a flow of three. Now let's pick the next edge, which is from C to D. So flow of C to D is the initial flow, which is six minus the minimum cap. So it is equal to three. And the flow from D to C is the initial flow, which is zero and the minimum cap, which is three. So let's draw this. So C to D flow is three. And from D to C flow is also three. Now let's check the next edge, which is D to T flow of D to T is the initial flow, which is six minus the minimum cap, which is three. And the flow from T to D is the initial flow, which was zero plus the minimum cap, which is three. So let's draw these two flows. So D to T is three and T to D is also three. So in the second cycle, these are the flows that we have in this network. Now we again come here while there's a path P from S to T in the residual graph. So if we check here, there is a path from S to A, A to B, B to C, C to D and D to T. And the minimum cap that we have here is, so from S to A, the flow is two, A to B flow is also two, B to three flow is three, C to D flow is three and D to T flow is three. So the minimum cap is two. So we come here and we add this minimum cap to the maximum flow. So we add two here. Then we process each of the edges in the path. So let's remove this first. So I've drawn this graph again and now let's process each of the edges that we have in this path. So first we have the edge from S to A. So flow from S to A will be the initial flow, which is two minus the minimum cap, which is also two. So it becomes zero and flow from A to S will be the initial flow, which is two plus the minimum cap, which is also two. So it becomes four. Let's draw this in the graph. So for S to A, we have a flow of zero, so we can remove this edge. And from A to S, we have a flow of four. Now let's process the next edge, which is from A to B. So flow of A to B is initial flow, which is two minus the minimum cap, which is two. So it becomes zero and flow from B to A is the initial flow, which is two plus the minimum cap, which is four. So let's draw this. So A to B is zero. We can remove this edge. And from B to A, 
the flow is 4. Now let's process the next stage which is from B to C. So flow from B to C is the initial flow which is 3 minus the minimum cap which is 2. And the flow from C to B will be the initial flow which is 0 plus the minimum cap which is 2. So let's draw this. So B to C is 1 and C to B is 2. So now let's process the next stage which is C to D. So flow from C to D is the initial flow which is 3 minus the minimum cap which is 2 and from D to C the initial flow which is 3 plus the minimum cap which is 2. So let's draw this. So C to D is 1 now and from D to C it is 5. Now let's process the last edge which is from D to T. So flow from D to T is the initial flow which is 3 minus minimum cap which is 2 so it becomes 1 and from T to D it is the initial flow which is 3 plus the minimum cap which is 2 so it becomes 5. So let's draw this D to T is 1 and T to D is 5. So now we have processed all the edges in this path. So now we come here in the while condition. So if we check in this residual graph from S we have no outgoing edge. We only have two incoming edges from A and C. So there is no path from S to T in this residual graph. So the while loop terminates here and at the end we return the maximum flow. So the maximum flow that we have is 2 plus 3 plus 2 which is equal to 7. So in this graph the maximum flow that is possible from source to the sink is equal to 7. So that is how a Ford Fulkerson algorithm works. So one important point to note here is how we will calculate this path from S to T in the residual graph. So here Edmund Karp optimized it by suggesting that we should use BFS algorithm because BFS will always find that path which has the least number of edges. And the time complexity of this algorithm is order of V into E square. Now once we have understood the pseudo code, let's try to implement this. So I'll be using C++ and all the code that I'll be showing is available in my GitHub repository. Link of that is available here and as well as in the description. Now let's have a look at the code. So I've taken the same example that I've discussed. So I've initialized V equal to 6 which is equal to the number of vertices. Then I've created a graph in the form of adjacency matrix. I've taken adjacency matrix because it is easier to obtain the weight of the edge between two vertices in adjacency matrix. Then here I'm adding all the edges in the graph. So I have an edge from 0 to 1 with a weight of 4. Then 0 to 3 with a weight of 3. So in this manner I initialize the graph with all the edges. Then I pass this graph in the Ford Fulkerson function. So it accepts the graph, the source and the sink. So 0 is our source and 5 is our sink. So in this Ford Fulkerson function, so initially I've kept a vector parent. I have initialized all the parents to minus 1. Next I have created a residual graph which is the copy of the original graph. So basically here I have initialized all the edges with the weight of the edges that was present in the graph. Then I've taken two variables minimum cap and maximum flow. And then in this while loop I do a BFS traversal and I find out what is the minimum cap that is present. So if the BFS traversal gives me a minimum cap which is not 0, I enter in this while loop. I add that minimum cap in the maximum flow and then I traverse all the nodes in that path and I adjust the flow values. So for u to v I add the minimum cap and from v to u I subtract the minimum cap. So how I've done that is in the BFS traversal I pass this parent vector and in this BFS function I do a BFS traversal and I save the parent of each of the nodes. And once I reach the sync vertex I return the minimum capacity that I have obtained. So if you have any doubts on how to do a BFS traversal, I have made a video describing in detail how we can do that. I will refer that video in the top right corner. And once this while loop ends, I return the maximum flow. And in the main function, I just print the maximum flow that we have obtained. So let's see the output of this program. So the output is the maximum flow that we can obtain is 7. So that was all for this video. If you have any doubts or suggestions, please write in the comment box below. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to make more such content. And until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.